So today we will be covering the Cold War MP5. Really, it's going to be a history of the MP5. So looking into a bit of the Call of Duty MP5 history, here we have Call of Duty .fandom.com. I'll link this below. And right here, every game that the MP5 has appeared in is listed right here. Now there's almost too many listed. I'll just I'm just gonna list the main ones. The first time we saw it was in Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. And then we saw it in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, of course, in Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered. And then we saw it in the latest Call of Duty Modern Warfare. And lastly, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, where it also appears in Cold War as the same weapon in Warzone. Now, if we're looking just at the MP5 history, right here, you're going to see. It was used in the Vietnam War in 1975 by the Green Berets. In 1976, the MP5K was introduced as a request for a variant. South America. In 1977, the standard 20 and 30 round curved steel magazines were introduced for the MP5A2 and the MP5A3 design. In 1978, the tropical forearm was introduced to be produced with the MP5. Scroll down here just a bit more. What made the MP5 famous? The reason the HK MP5 was so popular is simply because it's a well designed weapon. Doing full mag dumps is like cutting butter with a hot knife. There is no noticeable loss of control or rising issues when firing on sustained fully auto. Do Navy SEALs still use the MP5? The MP5 was for a time the weapon of choice for US counter-terrorist units such as Delta Force and DVGRU, I guess DevGru would be the way that's pronounced, as well as Navy SEALs boarding teams. MP5s of one flavor or another are still used by US SOF units, particularly for personal protection and covert operations. So it seems to be a very active gun with certain units still till this day. And uh, it's probably why they're bringing them back in all the Call of Duties as of late because it's still a popular gun. When it appeared in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, it was one of the most used, used guns in that game for sure. The M4 and the AK were very used in the assault rifle categories. This was definitely the most used submachine gun, probably between this and the Scorpion if I'm remembering correctly. So for the damage stats for this weapon, it hits 47 to the head, 33 to the chest, and to the stomach and extremities. It's a 33 as well. And this is always in reference to a full health and full shielded player bringing him to 250 HP. So for my attachments, I have the agency suppressor for the muzzle, the 9.5 reinforced heavy for the barrel, the collapsed stock for the stock, the field agent grip for under barrel, and then we got the 40 round drum for the ammunition. Okay, so we have our true game data on the screen here. I got all the exact same attachments put in. Everything's the exact same. But there is one thing I noticed I'll talk about in a second here. So I, I've kind of I brought this up before, but if you go down to the left side, you see your attachments and you see the good and the bad that those attachments bring, okay? And then on the right side, it's going to be a bit more specific with what those attachments do. So, you know, it'll see, you'll see collapse stock right here, minus 17 milliseconds on sprint to fire. And then you'll see on this side, you'll see that it's actually added. And it's so you can see the specific numbers if you like that kind of thing. For me, I really like to see those numbers. It's maybe just a bit nerdy, but just to give you an idea. So the one thing I noticed on this build is if you look at, all the attachments, those are the best attachments. I kind of went through and scrubbed through. So what I'll do is I'll scrub through and see, okay, what does what here, right? An agency suppressor is the obvious, like for sure, the best one. And then same thing with barrel as you go through all the barrel. There's some good and some bad of each barrel, right? You can build it for a bit more long range if you want and not have it have as good hip fire. Um, like something like this, right? The hip fire area is gonna increase by 75%. So if you don't care about up close gun fights with the MP5, then okay, maybe use this specific barrel but for me i i the hip fire is a huge thing for me so I, i'm going to be sticking with that 9.5 reinforced heavy but here's the thing i don't know if this is something they change i know they change attachment stuff all the time but the one thing i noticed you actually go down to the 40 round speed mag this is the one that i recommend and this is the one throughout research throughout saying what's the best build for the mp5 that many people recommend as well the standing 50 round is the exact same you get 10 more in the mag okay this is called a speed mag. This is not, but there's no change to your actual stats down here. So let's take a look at that. The 40 round speed mag, 
the only thing that changes is the standard right down here, right? The only thing that changes is the increase in mag size, which is the benefit. So that's one thing that I'm going to recommend that you change. So this is the money build for this gun, except for the fact that you're going to want to use a 50 instead of a 40, as I, as I showed you earlier in the game. I will definitely be using the 50 going forward. So this is the best possible build for the MP5 Cold War in Warzone. Finally, getting to my opinion of the MP5. So the thing with submachine guns is I actually feel like a lot of them with all the right attachments on them their time to kill is fantastic i just feel like you have to find a submachine gun that performs well for you because the best overall submachine gun at the time of posting this video and if you actually look at my video these are all older clips from the older verdansk the best submachine gun out there right now it's probably the mac 10 that's like the go-to submachine gun the lc 10 is slowly getting there and i feel like it's going to be at a point soon where it's comparable to the mac 10 but for like competitive guys that want to use a submachine gun it's going to be the mac 10. now using the mp5 for me i find that it performs better i find that i aim better with it um the iron sights it's kind of weird like they actually aren't as good but I just prefer them for whatever reason. I just prefer them. So I feel like you just need to find a submachine gun that performs well for you because the mobility is going to be a little bit different amongst all of them. The aim, aim down sights is going to be pretty comparable actually amongst all of them. It's all going to be pretty snappy and quick. And now the way the MP5 performs today, as opposed to this video, they've actually made it better. So all the clips you're seeing now, they're actually older clips. The the mobility in all the seven shikins has actually been improved. So there's another thing to consider there. What do you feel like works best for you as far as movement? And that's something you need to determine. I feel like the MP5 for myself works fantastic. Like at a medium range, I can still hit my shots and it, obviously it takes more to kill, but I can still hit my shots. And then up close, I find that for me, it works the best. So you just need to find a gun that works best for you and kind of just stick with it. And that will be it for the review of the Cold War MP5 in Call of Duty Warzone. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.